it looks like we're going to test the 1800 level. You know, you've got a couple of factors working against gold right now. Inflation is not great for gold. Certainly high dollar prices, although the dollar continues to be devalued, but the actual price on the board continues to go higher. Let's start with gold prices because, you know, I said I'm going to bring you on because you were telling me get ready, fasten that seatbelt, gold prices are about to take off. As we're speaking today, gold futures last trading at 18.59 an ounce, uh, down 2.7% on the day. Oof, that hurts. It does hurt, and it's it's easily predictable as you've watched the price action coming in, and we thought there was going to be a big move, and it looks like we're going to test the 1800 level. You know, you've got a couple of factors working against gold right now. Inflation is not great for gold. Certainly high dollar prices, although the dollar continues to be devalued, but the actual price on the board continues to go higher. Right now, you're seeing this a lot of wholesale selling of every, almost every asset class across the board. And gold and silver are really taking it on the chin. I mean, it, it looks like we're going to test. Silver's already broken down through some key levels, which looks like it's going to take it to maybe 21. And gold looks like 1,800. And if it goes through there, it could still go a lot lower. There's always room. But again, I think if you're an investor, I think this is a spot you should be looking to buy some gold. And again, if you're going to store it and you're not going to leverage yourself to buy it, but if you're trading it, you want to be on the short side now and until it proves that it can start to go higher again. And that could be a while with what's going on this week with the Fed and with the overall economy, not only here in the United States, but worldwide. So do you think it's also um, just coming back down here, anticipating in preparation for the rate hikes or has that already been baked in? I think it's pretty much priced in, Danny. There, you know, there isn't too many surprises. In fact, there was maybe a little surprise this morning in the ISM manufacturing number, yeah. which is a private number, so it's harder for, for them to guess what that's going to be. There's not as much disclosure coming into it. But when you look at the, the pricing action coming into this, I think a lot of this is baked in. But I think really what's going to really de determine when this Fed talks and what's going to happen to these metals is how they, the verbiage he uses in his speech afterwards you know the decision is i think baked in i think it's gonna be 50 to 75 basis points and i think the markets are thinking 75. so if it's anything worse or better it'll it'll have an effect but really his speech of what they're going to do going forward because they are so far behind the curve that even with a 75 point basis right hike will still be nominally negative interest rates let me ask you what about that steep drop we saw in gdp last week will that change course uh, for the Fed? Will that have an impact on them? It, they may, but they may use it as an excuse to not do something. You know, they, they talk a good game, but they really have done nothing, right? I mean, they've only raised a quarter since they've been talking about raising every meeting. So you never know. You know, the Fed, unfortunately, which is supposed to be private, is really part of another leg of the government, and they're kind of helping along. So they're kind of watching the markets, which doesn't make a lot of sense because the markets and the Fed should have nothing to do. It's not part of their mandate to watch the stock market. Their mandate is to control the economy, which they've totally lost control of. This is their problem. They don't understand how markets function to begin with. So it could have an effect and they could affect their decision, but I doubt it. They're stuck because inflation is the biggest problem and it is getting dramatically away, not to mention the food shortage that we're going to have, which is going to really spike inflation. Yeah, I had sticker shock this weekend. 12 bucks for four rolls of toilet paper. Baba. Okay. Wait till you buy bread. I want to bring up uh, a tweet from our friend Frank Justra, as you know, one of the most uh, prominent figures in the gold space. I thought it was interesting that he tweeted this, and I want to get your reaction. He said, I have never been a fan of cons conspiracy theories, but my 45 years experience in trading markets tells me that someone is deliberately suppressing the gold price, especially in the past two years. I suspect we will see a reset in the global monetary system sometime soon. Any thoughts? Do you agree with him here? Well, I, I think they may be trying to suppress, but here's my issue with those who believe the metals are manipulated. Okay? Tell me. The, the, you have to have, if somebody's trying to suppress it, there's got to be buyers buying it, right? Markets are two-sided. They are filled with price discovery. And if they were really trying to push them lower, then the buyers would walk away and nobody would be buying. So I, they may be trying to keep a lid on it, but overall... You still have to have a buyer, and if the buyer stepped away, you would see a dramatic fall. We have not seen it. Remember, we were just at almost 2,000, okay? So now we're down you know, 10% from 2,000, or less than that, to 8%. So, I, again, to me, 
there's a cap, but there's not a cap. If you look at a 15-year chart on a monthly basis, it really looks like gold is forming an extremely bullish pattern, which is known as a cup and handle. So I think that, you know, when it does decide to take off, now again, where it's going to take off from, I don't know. But when it does, I think we run through the new highs. But until then, we're going significantly lower. And if you want to call it manipulated, I can, I can live with it. I can hear it. There is conspiracy theory, certainly in the fiat currency system, which is the biggest fraud market in the world. So that we could, we could look at. But overall, I, don't, I still know one thing. There's got to be a buyer and a seller to make a market.